trust in the Lord. Good morning, Wheat Street Baptist Church family. Isn't it good? I don't know about anybody else, but it is good to be in the house of the Lord. I know that we are in the midst of a pandemic, but make your space a sacred space. Make your space a sanctuary as we prepare to worship together in spirit and in truth. Let's listen to the words of the Lord coming from Psalms chapter 46. And there it reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters therefore uh, roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake uh, with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams uh, whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right uh, early, the heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let us bow our heads as we go before the throne of grace. Dear gracious and eternal God, we are so thankful. We are so thankful that you are indeed with us. And God, right to where we are, just allow ourselves to enter into your presence. That God, we cast all our cares aside because we are thankful for this moment. We are thankful for this opportunity to come before your presence. Dear Heavenly Father, continue to bless this worship experience. Allow it to uh, touch somebody's heart. Allow it to encourage someone's soul and strengthen them for their journey. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Well, good morning, Wheat Street Baptist Church. This is yet again another day that the Lord has made and we are here to rejoice and be glad in it. Is anybody excited to have breath in your body this morning? I know for certain that I am because somebody somewhere is laying in a hospital bed. Somebody somewhere doesn't have the ability to stand on their own two feet. But you and I, we have the ability to lift our hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for another day. Would you join me as we begin to worship and praise the name of our Savior? Very familiar song this morning. It says, we've come this far by faith. Open your mouths all over the world and let's sing together. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in His holy word. Hallelujah. He never failed me yet. If you believe it, say, oh, 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 can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Let's sing that together again. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. 
Oh, 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 can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. One last time. We've come this far by faith. That's our testimony today. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. Hallelujah, Jesus. He never failed me yet. Say, oh, 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 can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Until I die, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. In the Lord, I will trust in the Lord until I die. Are there any faithful soldiers going to stay on the battlefield? I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die, die. Yes, Lord, I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. One last time, say, I will trust. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Clap those hands if you're trusting in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to trust until we die. Amen. Good morning, Wheat Street Baptist Church family. What a dynamic word of affirmation that God will continue to be with us. And we are reminded that we will see the goodness of the Lord. Listen, I know it's been a tough week. I know it's been a trying time this week, but we are reminded that God calls us friend, that God calls us friend, no matter what society may call us, no matter uh, what we may see on the news that God will be with us even until the end of the world. And it is so important during this time to continue to connect, to continue to build community. So we just want to welcome our church family and all of the visitors. If you are visiting with us, please make sure that you type in on YouTube Live and on Facebook Live as well. Make sure that you uh, type some comments and just allow us to know who's worshiping with us in this digital experience. God is indeed good. And if you are visiting with us, we want to ask that you would text the word CONNECT to the number 404. 476-7992. Once again, text the word CONNECT 
to 404-476-7992. And we have ministers that are available for you on YouTube Live and on Facebook Live. So make sure that you feel welcome in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Welcome to the service. Amen. You can't be God-giving No matter how you try For just, just as sure That you are living and the Lord He's in heaven on high. The more you give, the more He gives to you. Just keep on giving. It's really true that you, you can't beat God giving no matter how you try. We have reached a time where we can all participate within the worship experience through our tithes and our offering. It's God's financial plan for God's church and for God's people. There are a number of ways that you are able to give. You can go to our website at www.wearewheatstreet.org or you can use the Easy Tithe app on your mobile device or you can text the number 404-609-0111 or you can mail your tithes and your offering to the church at 24 William Holmes Border Drive. Listen, your contributions have definitely been a blessing to the kingdom of God during this time. We pray that we'll be able to continue to utilize those offerings to make sure that people remain encouraged and make sure that that the word continues to go forth during this time. Simple song. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good. My God is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good. Oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy worthy for he is good yes he is good i believe we have some thankful worshipers on the stream this morning as you're giving your offering take a moment and in the chat just type one thing that god has done for you one reason for you to be grateful right now let's just flood the timeline with praises 
praise reports. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. God is a restorer. God is a redeemer. We're grateful. We have an attitude of gratitude on this morning. Our God is worthy for he is worthy, worthy for he is good. Yes, he is good. My God is worthy, worthy for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer for our offertory prayer. Dear gracious and eternal God, we thank you for the blessing of this day. We thank you for your ultimate sacrifice. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to give our tithes and our offering. God bless the gift and the giver and allow the money to be used for the edification of your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, amen. Paul writes these words in 2 Corinthians. I am troubled, yet not distressed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Cause I'm a vessel full of power. With a treasure none can compare. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed, cause I'm a vessel full of power with a treasure from the Lord. So thank you, Father, for your power. It has resurrected me. And all oh, for painful circumstances that my poor soul could not flee. I've been bruised and battered, but not forsaken. Brought my sin, but from sin I'm free. Cause I'm a vessel full of power with a treasure that lives in me. So thank you, Father, for your power. It has resurrected me and all the painful circumstances 
that my poor soul could not flee. As I'm a vessel full of power with a treasure from the Lord. Good morning, Wheat Street. It is such an honor and a privilege to stand before you this morning as we worship our great and awesome, wonderful God. As we go into our sermon this morning, I want you to meditate with me on tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is such an honor to trust him. I don't know about you, but throughout my week, this is something that has been in my spirit um, that's been encouraging me so that I hope it encourages you as well. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon and to know the said the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove him all and all Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I've learned to trust thee, precious Jesus. you thanking you God for another day that you have opened our eyes God another day that there is breath in our body another day when we are able to feel your glory in your presence right where we are so God we cry out to you saying Abba Father be with us God take us on this journey as we go through life as we go through uncertainty. God, as we don't know what tomorrow holds, we know that you are there. So Holy Spirit, rest upon the hearts and the minds of the spirit of every listener, God. In their car, in their living room, in their bedroom, on the job, wherever they are, God, meet them. Let them know that you supply every need. Let them know that you are a good God. It is so sweet to trust you, Jesus to rely on your word, to know, God, that you minister to us, God, in the ways that we don't even know that you can. God, I thank you that we are never alone. 
Thank you, God, that you minister to the deepest parts of us that cry out to you, that don't even know the words to articulate, that don't even know what to say. God, you can solve every problem. So today I pray, God, as we go forth in the word that you soften the hearts to receive everything that comes from you, God. Give me the words to say, and most of all, give us something that will carry us through the rest of our week. God, we need you. Lord, we love you. God, we rely on you. We thank you for who you are. God, thank you for the things that you've done and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I am so excited to give this word. Uh, one of the things that has been encouraging me throughout our quarantine and being out of quarantine and going back into quarantine has been talking to God on the daily. And in my private time, in my quiet time, I'd been studying the book of John. And I was reading the story of when Jesus walked on the water. And so this morning, uh, as I go into those private time and go into that uh, devotional time I have with God and share that with you, I want to give you this title today of this message. And it is titled, Is Jesus in Your Boat? And as I was studying the story of Jesus walking on the water, there was another part of this story that really stood out to me this time around studying this and reading this text. And it comes out of John 6, John chapter 6, verse, verses 16 through 21. And as I read this, I want you to think about the different details of this story that stand out to you. Again, verse 16, chapter 6, verse 16. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. Today again, I want to ask you, is Jesus in your boat? I remember first hearing this story and studying this story as a young child in Christian private school. And I remember as they shared the story, we were able to see different pictures of what this day, what this event might have looked like. In the images, we see Jesus walking in a storm, walking on top of the water towards scared disciples as they Figure out, you know, is this a ghost? Is it a spirit coming to attack us? Are we dying? What's going on? And in this photo, you see Jesus holding out his hand and depicting a vision that God often shows us today. And I remember as a child, as I looked at that photo, I remember saying, what would I do if I was in that predicament? And, you know, as a kid, you're thinking, what if I was on a boat stranded and these waves rose? And what if I was, you know, in this very scary situation? But then you get a little bit older and you realize you have a lot of those storm moments in your life. What we're going through now, the global pandemic, the injustice that we're seeing, uh, excuse me, pandemic, the, the injustice that we're seeing and the issues that we see in the world, that is a storm. But we have the opportunity to look to a Savior who's extending his hand and say, Lord, we welcome you into our boat. You can calm the storm. You can bring peace into my life and you can get me where I'm going. You see, when we invite Jesus into our boat and we invite Jesus into our life, immediately things can change. In this verse, we see it was dark, a storm was happening, the disciples were frightened, and if you read a little bit earlier in this chapter, you see Jesus had just fed the 5,000. And in Mark's version of this event, Jesus tells the disciple to go ahead, and 
I really believe he does that because he's trying to teach them a lesson. There are a lot of great lessons that Jesus teaches the disciples as the ultimate teacher. And one of those lessons was to invite him into their life, but to also trust him. I want to read to you guys Matthew's account of this story. Because in this account, we also see where Peter is invited to walk on the water. And that's Matthew 14, chapter, chapter 14, verse 25 through 32. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out loud, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith. He said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the, into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the son of God. And so I love reading the different versions of the story because what we see in the disciples is what we see in a lot of us today. Troubles come, storms come, we see the news, we see the media telling us all these horrible things, and then we look around frightened and we're scared and we say, Lord, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? But we have the opportunity, again, to invite Jesus into our lives so that he can do exactly what he does, and that is to solve our problems, that is to calm the storm, that is to calm and appease our fears and to let us know that he is with us. You see, when Jesus was walking the earth, he was fulfilling prophecy. He was performing miracles and teaching us how to live on the earth. We get to learn so many lessons from the New Testament on how to operate in times of fear and uncertainty. Again, I ask you, is Jesus in your boat? We can learn from the disciples because they do look awfully like a lot like us. When I think about how a lot of the, you know, recent events have occurred, how um, we see, again, the difficult time we're facing, again, a lot of uncertainty in the world, we realize there's a lot of questions that we're asking ourselves, our families, and our friends. These include God, what am I going to do about my job? It looks like the, the economy, we're going into a recession. God, how am I going to pay my bills? My hours at work are being cut. They say unemployment's running out. We worry about the pandemic. Who's sick? Who's going to get sick? Who can't get sick? When are they going to find a cure? We see our government constantly having issues and entangled in trouble and in constant need of prayer. Can't even look to those leaders. Morale is low. The schools don't know what to do for our babies. They don't know whether to open or close. And there's a lot of other things happening in our personal lives outside of the global and nationwide issues that we're facing. And although these are very legitimate issues, I'm telling you today that you must let God in your boat. When Jesus is in the boat, the storm is calmed. We get to where we need to go expeditiously. In the Greek, the word for boat is ployon. It also means boat, ship, or vessel. I love this breakdown because when I see the word vessel, I think about how the Bible calls us a vessel of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians six nineteen says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. And when I read that, I realize that nothing I'm facing, I'm walking through it. I'm never walking through it alone. You are never alone. Even if you feel like what you are facing seems impossible to overcome, God is with you. If you have invited him into your life, if you've invited him into your vessel, there is nothing you face that you can't overcome. This is so comforting to me to know that we have help. When you are, 
when you are in the midst of your storm, do you have tunnel vision on your God who is able to solve every problem, able to walk with you against everything that you face and to show you that you can stand tall, you can stand strong, and nothing can take you out? I love this story because it's a reminder that Jesus walked the earth, experiencing human emotions, knowing exactly what it looks like for us to be fearful, to doubt, or in need of help. This story reminds us that we have a faith that we can lean into. Jesus not only calmed the storm, but he got them to where they were going. He helped them to complete their mission. You have a purpose in this pandemic. But you'll only arrive to that place if Jesus is in your boat. When I think about that, when I think about the idea of having purpose in the midst of a pandemic, many of us think of big dreams. We think of big career goals or we think of things that we dreamed about when we were children and, you know, a big um Big ideas that we have for ourselves. And yes, you still have that purpose even in the midst of what's going on. Yes, you do. But what about the purpose of living in peace? What about the purpose of living strong in your faith? What about the purpose of trusting God and showing the world when they're afraid and when they're fearful that it's possible to believe even in the midst of great unbelief? What about that purpose? But we arrive at that purpose of living in peace and trusting God and, and having belief. When we build a relationship with the Christ that we're inviting into our life, inviting into our vessel, inviting into our boat. You see, what I've challenged myself with during this uh, pandemic and during these trying times socially and, and, and during these trying times in our economy, what I've challenged myself to do is to get closer to that Jesus every day, challenging myself to be in the word like never before, pray and intercede like never before, fast like never before, because it's going to take us allowing God into our lives in a greater way for us to see the manifestation of the things that we're hoping for. How do I come to my purpose in pandemic? It's by staying close to the Christ that is able to get me quickly, immediately to where I desire to go. So if I'm worried about my health, if I'm worried about my peace, if I'm worried about stress, if I'm worried about my job, there is nothing that Christ cannot do if I allow him to do so. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. But how do you receive it if you don't know that it's available to you? How do you attain it if you don't ask? How do you receive it if you do not believe? I love how John 14 and 6 says, Jesus is talking and says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. When I was studying this and in prayer over these scriptures, I was reminded of a time in my life where I truly had to lean into these scriptures, lean into the God that I believed in. This was a time where I just graduated from undergrad, I'm working in corporate now, I'm in my own apartment, have a new car, you know, I'm feeling like I'm on top of the world. And during this time, uh, I noticed that things were getting kind of, there was a little bit of tension happening at work. And I had a feeling, I said, okay, you know what, things don't seem like they're going well, it's looking like I could potentially be let go. Well, a few weeks later, after I got that unction, I was let go from that job. And I remember packing up my belongings in my box. It felt like a movie. And I remember throwing it in the car, and I sat in the car, and I said, I cannot believe this. I'm jobless. I have all these bills to pay. What am I going to do? And I remember God telling me, this is an opportunity to practice your faith. How many of you are in a situation where it's an opportunity to practice your faith? And so I remember praying and I said, Lord, well, if you brought me to this, you're going to get me through this. And I'm going to stand on your word. And every day when I woke up, I spoke the scripture over myself. I prayed. I meditated on that thing. I said, every day I'm going to believe that the God that I talk about, the God that I pray to, the God I preach about, the God that I sing about is going to carry me through this season of my life. And do do you not know that in every single thing that I faced during that time of my life, I saw God perform more miracles than any other season. Every bill was paid. My rent was paid. My car note was paid for an entire year without having a steady flow of income or a steady job. Because the God that I said that I believed, I had to trust him 
to do exactly what he said he could and would do for me in his word. And so when I talk about letting Jesus into your life, letting Christ into the boat, I'm talking about letting the Jesus that we read about do exactly what the miracles that he said in this word manifest that in your life today. Those miracles that we read about are not just for uh, the Bible days. They're for you to lean into today. And so when we we talk about letting Jesus into the boat, I want to give you some practical ways for you to do that. When you invite Jesus in, the first thing that you do, especially for those who are unbelievers, is to become a believer. If you're not saved, get saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us that we, if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. So accepting Christ is the most important thing you can do to allow Jesus into your vessel, into your life, into your spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit into you. If you're already a believer, then this is just a a matter of praying and saying, Jesus, I invite you into my life. Take over. God, I need rest. God, I need peace. God, I'm unable to sleep at night. God, I'm stressed. Invite the Lord in to your life through prayer. The second practical step I want to give you is to allow the Lord into your circumstance. Just like that story where I lost my job, the first thing I did was not to call my parents, even though you want to do that and say, hey, mom and dad, I need some money. I didn't call them first. I called on Jesus because at this point, there's a God that I believe in that I need to lean into. I need to trust in. And God did exactly what he said. And yes, there were times where the family was led to help me. Yes, that was wonderful. But how did I keep my peace of mind? How did I keep my sanity? How did I keep from being stressed and overwhelmed? It was through leaning into Christ, letting God into my circumstance. The third practical tip that I want to give you is to invite Jesus Jesus into your day-to-day. Get into your word. Turn off the TV, get into that Bible, get into that intercessory prayer, and talk to God. God will tell you how to maneuver through these seasons if you let him. Lastly, inviting Jesus into our boat includes building a steady relationship. And I often talk about this into the youth groups that I minister to. You know, when they first start dating somebody, they're texting all the time. They're calling them all the time. They're FaceTiming. There's a day-to-day communication that's happening. And there's an excitement to talk to that person, you know, when they first start dating. And so for us, sometimes we forget the enjoyment, the excitement we're supposed to have in building the relationship with Christ. When we talk about letting Jesus into our boat, there's a day-to-day walk that Christ invites us to. The Bible calls us friends of God when we accept Christ. I want to remind you that when you invite Jesus into your life, when you invite Jesus into your boat, into your vessel, not only will you see the storms calm, but you will arrive at your expected destination. So again, again, I ask you, Is Jesus in your boat? And if he is not, invite him in today. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to invite you into our lives, God. Into the spaces, God, that seem like they're a mess. In the spaces where we don't know what to do, God. Into the situations that we don't know how to handle them, God. Into our world, God, that is sick and in need of you. God, we invite you in. Lord, for those who are struggling to pray because they're so weary, God. For those who are so stressed that their mind can't even find a moment of peace to read your word. Lord, we invite you in. Touch us in the way that only you can, God. Speak to us in the way that only you can. Heal us in the ways that only you can, God. Calm the storms in our life, God. The personal storms that we're facing, but God, also the global storms, God. We pray for our leaders, God. We pray for our governors, God, our mayors, God, our president, God, our world leaders, God, who need direction on what to do. Lord, show us the way. Jesus, we invite you into our church, God. We invite you into our homes. Have your way and take your place. God, we need you. Lord, we won't make it out of these crazy times without you, Lord. We call on the name that is above every name, the name that saves, delivers, and gives us hope when we feel hopeless. 
Lord, we invite you into our vessel. And today, as we go through the week, I pray that you touch the lives of every believer listening, God, that they know that they can rely and depend on you. Lord, you don't fail. So we put our hope, our trust, we put, God, our thoughts and our meditations on you. And we receive everything that we need from you, God, today. Whether that is finances, God, whether that is peace, whether that's a new job, whether that is healing, whether that is restoration of relationships. God, we receive that from you today because we invite you in. So, God, have your way. Have your way, Lord. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us, uh, our Wheat Street family today in, in service. If you feel so led to come to Christ and invite Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, there are numbers that we have posted where you can call or you can text and receive a formal invitation into the family of God, into the family of Christ. So please do so. If you felt led to join the church, uh, you can also use those same numbers and text or call and join our Wheat Street family. We'd love to have you. Uh, we pray that the service was a blessing to you, encouraged your spirit, and that you are able to go in peace with what you have experienced today. So please feel free to email, call, uh, send that text, or leave a message in the chat box, whatever you feel led to do. Thank you. When my heart is overwhelmed, my prayer is Lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock. Higher than I, oh Lord. When my heart is overwhelmed, I'm asking, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock higher than I, oh Lord, higher than I. Let's sing that together with my heart. When my heart is overwhelmed, my prairies lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock Higher than I Oh Lord When my heart is overwhelmed I'm asking Lead me to the rock Lead me to the rock Higher than I Oh Lord Higher than I. Lead me to the rock. 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 That's our prayer today. Lead me to the rock. 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 When my heart is overwhelmed, my prayer is lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock Higher than I Oh Lord When my heart is overwhelmed I'm asking Lead me to the rock Lead me to the rock Higher than I Oh Lord, higher than I.
Today, I want to encourage you to invite Jesus into your boat. We talked about in the lesson today, the boat is your life. You are a vessel. Invite Jesus in and watch God do amazing things in your life. So I pray that this week you are in peace, that you are prosperous, that you are comforted in every way that you need, and that the light of God shines on your face and gives you everything that you need. Many blessings to you from myself and the Wheat Street family. Go in peace. Amen.